Hi everyone, today we're going to solve quadratic equations by factoring. Um, we're going to use the AC method to factor these, so let's get started. Um, our first example, we have x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals 0. Okay. First thing we want to do is find our a, b, and c in this uh, quadratic equation. And just a reminder for those of you that have looked at factoring before, um, anytime we're talking about a, b, and c, a and b are coefficients on the x squared and the x respectively, and c is always your constant. Okay, so we have our a, b, and c. Our a, since there's not a coefficient on x squared, our a is 1. Okay. We're going to take our a times c. We're going to get negative 15. We're going to look at our b, which is negative 2. Now we are going to find all our factors of negative 15. So we have 1 and 15, and we have 3 and 5. Now these are all positive. They're not going to give us a negative number, so one, at least one of the factors has to be negative in each pair. If I look at B, that's negative 2, I have to add my factors together to get to B. So if I'm adding factors together to get to negative 2, that means that my larger factors have to be negative. So 1 plus negative 15 will give me a negative 14. 3 minus 5, or 3 plus negative 5 will give it me a negative 2. So this 3 and negative 5 is the pair I'm looking for. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put a 1x plus 3 and a 1x minus 5 equals 0. And I'm going to check for any GCFs. And in this case, the GCF for each of my, uh, for each of my binomial factors is 1. So I really don't have a GCF I need to worry about. I can go straight up with the x plus 3 and x minus 5. So next thing I'm going to do is separate these two out. x plus 3 equals 0. x minus 5 equals 0. I could do this because of something called the zero product property. The zero product property says that anytime I have two numbers I'm multiplying together. If one of those numbers, one of those factors equals zero, then the whole product is going to be zero. Anytime we multiply something times zero, we're going to get a product of zero. So by setting each of these equal to zero, we can find out what's going to make each product or each factor zero. So x plus 3 equals 0. I'm going to subtract 3 for both sides and get x equals negative 3. x minus 5 equals 0. I'm going to add 5 to both sides and get x equals 5. So my solution set is negative 3 and 5. Now, if I look at example 2, example 2 is 4x squared minus 16x plus 15 equals 0. Now this is going to be very similar. I'm still going to look for my a, b, and c. I'm still going to find factors and what adds up to give me my b. The difference here is just that our a is not 1. Our a is 4. Our b is negative 16. And our c is 15. We're going to follow all the same steps here that we did over here on this first example. So my a times c is a positive 60. My b is a negative 16. So I'm going to look for all my factors of 60. I have 1 and 60. I have 2 and 30. 3 and 20. 4 and 15. 5 and 12 and 6 and 10. Okay, because my a times c is positive, that means that all my factors have to have the same sign. So I'm going to look at my b to see what that sign is. Since my b is negative, that means that all of my factors are negative. So 
I'm going to throw some negatives up on all of these factors. And when I add my factors together, negative 61, negative 32, negative 23, negative 19, negative 17, negative 16. This last factor paired down here at the bottom, the negative 6 and negative 10, is the factor pair that adds up to negative 16. So that's the factor pair I'm going to want. Okay? So I'm going to come back over here, and just like I did over here where I put 1x plus 3, and this 1x came from my a value, over here I'm going to put 4x minus 6 and 4x minus 10. But I have to look for a GCF for each one, okay? Now this whole thing, including the GCF portion of it, is going to equal 0. So 4x minus 6, my GCF, my greatest common factor for 4 and 6 is 2. My greatest common factor for 4 and 10 is also 2. Okay? So now I'm just going to take 4 and 6 divided by 2. So I get 2x minus 3. Okay? So 2x minus 3. Over here, I'm going to have 2x minus 10, 5. Jeez. Sorry, guys. 2x minus 5. And that's going to be equal to 0. And again, I'm going to use my zero product rule and separate those out to find out what makes each binomial or makes each factor equal to 0. So 2x minus 3 equals 0. I'll add 3 to both sides. Then I'll divide both sides by 2, so I get x equals 3 halves. For 2x minus 5 equals 0, add 5 to both sides. Then I'll divide by 2, so x equals 5 halves. And my solution set for this one is 3 halves and 5 halves. Okay. And... That's my solution. That's how we solve by factoring. And remember, just another reminder for those of you that have already solved using tables or graphs, um, a solution to a quadratic equation is just where the, the parabola crosses the x-axis. So when we're solving by factoring, we're just looking at for the x values. Where did this parabola happen across the x-axis? So in the case of the first one, if I wanted to just generally sketch a, my parabola, it's going to cross at negative 3 and again at 5. And my C value tells me that it um, has an, a, a y-intercept way down here at negative 15. But I'm interested in these two points because that's where it crosses the x-axis. That's why they're my solutions. All right, guys, thanks for listening along, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye.